the world of online reviews and influencers is anything but simple. With all the stuff out there about fake reviews and influencers shilling out cheap crap all in the name of making money and profit, you really need to think about whether or not that review you're reading is as genuine as it seems. So I'm here to ask the question, should you trust beauty influencers? Hi guys, I'm Dr. K and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm diving into the ugly world of beauty reviews and whether you should trust the beauty influencers. Now, before you all come for me, this is not an attack on any particular influencer. I won't be naming names or doxing anyone. So let's just all relax. But this video is just to make you question whether or not you should really believe what you see, especially online and on social media. So let's dive into it. It's official. Most of us look at a product review online before we make a purchase. Research shows that up to 90% of all consumers use reviews to make purchase decisions and this is up from 72 percent from 2014. the reason for this is simple no one wants to waste money with so much choice nowadays it's getting more and more difficult to make a good decision when buying new products and these reviews help they enable us to get an insight into other people's experiences and allow us to look up product flaws and critiques before deciding whether or not to buy. But likes and reviews can be faked and the humble influencer that's recommending a particular product may actually have some underhand motives. So how did we all get here? In the old days, we only had print media like magazines and TV programs to guide us. They were the go-to source for all the latest beauty trends and for so-called honest reviews. However, these traditional media outlets had a very westernized and Eurocentric focus. They were not inclusive and basically ignored people of color. They were also being directly paid by beauty companies to advertise and feature their products. These issues coupled with the growth of the internet and social media allowed online communities to form and for the regular person to connect with other people without having to rely on Vogue or Cosmo or Glamour magazine or whatever. A lot of people such as myself who felt excluded from traditional media turned to these online communities instead. A decade ago, if you needed beauty advice, you might have referred to a dermatologist or from the pages of the beauty columns in a magazine. Today, you're much more likely to get the same advice from a YouTube beauty influencer. This all shows that social media has made information much more accessible to everyone everywhere so let's talk about the humble beauty influencer the clue is in the name influencer and influencers wield a lot of influence research even shows that the influencer next door has a lot of power over the decisions we make on what we buy they are much more influential than what a sales assistant might say, or even our family and friends. This hasn't been something that has happened by accident. The relationship we have with influencers is very unique. This is because very often we've been there from the beginnings and watched them grow from filming low resolution beauty tutorials in their bedrooms to now having millions of followers. They share their lives with us, their ups and downs. So they become much more approachable and relatable than say a mega a Hollywood celebrity or somebody that you used to see on TV. We look at them as friends and it's hard to believe that your friend would deliberately mislead you or lie to you for financial gain. How beauty influencers can mislead. In time, influencers have realized that this special relationship that they have with their followers can be monetized. What bothers me is about people not being open about how they make their money and being honest about what they do. A lot of things are going on behind the scenes and the so-called organic bit of content that's sold to you and me, the viewer, is anything but. One of the things that beauty influencers do that annoy me is the so-called 
free product review. It's easy to say, yes, this is a genuine review and you really genuinely love the product, but how genuine is it when you've been given the product for free? A company by the name of Review Meta did a lot of work looking into the example of Amazon reviews. The results indicated that reviewers who wrote incentivized reviews, meaning they received the product for free, or at a discount, were more likely to leave a positive review. The research from Review Meta also showed they were almost four times less likely to leave a critical review in general. This is the data backing up what we already know, that whenever you get something for free or at a discount, you're much less likely to be critical and much more likely to overlook the negatives of a product. But when your job is as a beauty influencer and you've got communities of people who are willing on your word to reach into their pocket and shell out money, you have to be careful with that. Another thing that beauty influencers do that grinds my gears is not declaring sponsorships. This can happen in different ways. It can be the influencer themselves that chooses not to declare or brands can specify or specify about ways of getting around declaring the sponsorship. And this is all in an attempt to come across as organic content. This clearly goes against many advertising guidelines and it shouldn't be done, but it's done every day and you don't even know it. Let's face it, no one likes watching infomercials and commercials and nobody likes to feel like they're being sold to 24 seven. Brands are aware of this and they're aware that their customers will do anything to avoid having to watch adverts. So what then happens is a game of cat and mouse and brands will then resort to increasing ways to get you to see their products. One of the most common ways they do this is with product placement in TV shows and movies. And that's now happening increasingly also on social media. With you seeing content in videos that is supposedly organic, but when you actually look at it, you realize that that entire video is nothing more than a 20 minute advert for a particular product. Very often brands will be specific when engaging with the influencer about what parts of the video or where in the video to place the content, how long the influencer should talk about the products for, what details or specific phrases that they need to get out. All these ways to kind of disguise an advert. Another thing that I see quite often is the whole brand ambassadors and the use of affiliate codes. I've watched many a YouTuber who in one breath says they're an ambassador for a particular brand, but then also claim that they're really, really passionate about the same brand and they would do this for free. If so, why aren't you doing it for free? You should just turn back and say to the brand, hold up, I don't need your money. Just give me the product and I will happily be your ambassador for free. Money makes the world go round and I don't have a problem with you being paid to be a brand ambassador, but don't misrepresent and try and make it out as if you're doing something for my benefit when you're the one getting paid, not me. Another thing that I've seen happen is influencers often have direct links to the product that they're reviewing, but they don't declare it. These may be brands that they've established themselves rather than a third party brand that they're promoting. But why do they wait until they're called out on it before they actually come out and be honest about their links to their brand? There's nothing wrong with promoting your brand to your followers and your communities. But the issue for me is about going about it in an underhand way and only coming out and declaring that it was their brand when they are called out on it. When it comes to brand honesty and having a genuine relationship with your followers, I don't think you should wait until you're called out on something before you do the right thing. I think doing the right thing should be your motive from day one. Have you seen an influencer promote a product and label it as best thing ever, best thing game changer product this week and then mention another product in the same category is another game changer product next week. In my view, if everything that you come across is the best thing ever, 
then that really means none of them are the best thing ever. Because by pure definition, there can only be one thing that's the best thing ever. It's okay to change our minds. I'm not saying that you need to commit to one product for the rest of your life. And you might realize that what you liked before, you don't like now. Fine, then say that. So how can you avoid falling into the influencer trap? First thing is try not to fall for the hype. Really? Apart from the discovery of the wheel and sliced bread, very few inventions are actually the big deal that they seem. Is that foundation really going to change your life? Especially when you have a whole shelf of other groundbreaking foundations. Number two, triangulate and research. Triangulation is a term in research that involves using multiple points of data to arrive at one decision. And this is what I believe that you should do when you're looking at beauty reviews. So it means that before you add that product to your cart, based on one influencer recommendation, look at other websites, look on Reddit, Amazon, look at other YouTubers, especially the nano influencers and those who paid for the products themselves instead of being sent it as PR. Number three, time. I believe that time tends to reveal all. And this means to be very skeptical of influencers that swear down that a product has changed their life on first use. This is not realistic. A new moisturizer will not treat your acne instantly. That's not how this works. So pay more attention to influencers who as part of their review do things like wear tests or they will come back and give an update after six hours or a day or a week or even a month. The longer that influencer is able to review that product for, the more reliable that product is likely to be because you're gonna get a much more rounded review rather than, oh my God, I've taken this product out of the box. It's amazing, it works, buy it. Pay attention to reviews that aren't filled with superlatives like the best, game changer, hero product, life changing, all that kind of very dramatic words that gather attention and are clickbait. A more realistic and helpful review, in my opinion, is likely to be just kind of middle of the way. Although they're not as clickbaity or as attention grabbing, these reviews may actually be more balanced and more helpful. Even with all these tips, don't beat yourself if you fall for the hype and are influenced to buy something that later turns out to be a dud. I've got a whole drawer full of tat that I've been influenced as well. Remember, it's all part of the psychology of influencing and you're only human. Just try to learn from the experience and move on. Influencers do need to do their due diligence if they want to remain influential and relevant. It's no longer good enough to claim that they didn't know or they weren't sure. My advice to influencers is that you should get ahead of what's going to happen and work towards being as open and as honest with your followers as much as possible. Even if other influencers aren't doing it, because trust me, the legislation is coming and there will be an overhaul sooner or later around this whole influencer marketing thing. To me, as a follower and a consumer, it's only a positive. I'm realistic and I know that the world doesn't run on good luck. People need to earn money to pay bills and live, survive and thrive. And I don't have any issue with you doing that as an influencer. However, going above and beyond, having open discussions, being willing to declare and be upfront about what you're doing is the way forward and will only improve that relationship that you worked so hard to grow. So what do you guys think of this video and the whole kind of influencer marketing, influencer advertising thing? It's a big, big topic and I'm sure you've got different perspectives. And if you do, let me know what you're thinking in the comments below. If you've liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for other similar content to this. I release videos on Monday afternoons, so stay tuned and I'll see you in my next one.